afternoon everyone how are you all thank you for joining me in studio today it's uh, not too bad day is it today and we're on time check us out for the first time ever we are good at timekeeping honest i promise in today's studio we are going to be visiting the last academy stamp which is very very sad and we are going to be doing some freehand work today so something a little bit different now I'm not looking at the screen because you're all saying, ooh, look at the posh hair. <laughs> it's okay. It needs toning down a bit. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to get rid of those sparkly hairs. So um, my name is Tony Derrick and I'm a guest presenter over on Create and Craft and all of anything to do with stamping, die cutting, colouring, painting, all the stuff that helps me relax, helps you relax and inspires you in some way, shape or form to maybe um, expand your crafting from just an everyday card to maybe something that's going to elevate your cards to maybe look make them look like art and maybe it looks like you've um, learnt a new technique should I put it that way is that a little bit better it maybe looks like you've turned your your hand to painting rather than using stamps when really you haven't so um, do I need to tell you anything first of all if you are on YouTube for the first time please click that subscribe button that will let you know when we've got all the new stuff going on, new launches, new videos. And I will say that Nathan's nearly made his way through all of the Craft Academy videos, which is a lot, and condense them down, you know, to the fabulous one minute 30-ish videos. So you can have like a quick flick through things without having to listen to me talk about all the other stuff that I have to get through on a live studio. So if you are, if you've got the little HD button, that gives you a better viewing experience also. And if after the show you are able, please pop a comment below the video and this will help with a wider reach of our YouTube channel. So just a couple of things I need to tell you about then. So let's just have a look at the notes. So uh, show times, pen at the ready for Thursday. So I have the times confirmed. So we've got Thursday the 16th and it's 8.15 and 3pm, so two shows that day. And then Saturday we have the pick of the day and that is 7.30, 3pm and 8.15. And then Sunday we have 2.15 and 7.30. So one, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, seven shows. Yeah, how cool is that? So seven shows to show you as much as I can with the products um, we will be launching. On each day we will be launching new things. So Thursday will be brand new, Saturday will be brand new and Sunday will be brand new. How are you going to cho choose? I don't know. Um, I do feel sorry for you. I really do. And I say this every time. So um, I'm doing a Facebook Live tomorrow at one o'clock uh, showcasing and I'll show you all of the products so you do get that exclusive sneak peek. So if there is something you've got your eye on or if you're thinking, do you know what, I have got a budget and I would like to see everything so I know to wait. So if you see me on the Thursday and you're not sure what's going to come on the Friday and the Saturday, watch the Facebook Live and I'll tell you which is on which days. So if you're thinking I've only got a small amount of you know, budget, I'm going to save myself for Sunday, then you can do that. Because I would hate for you to spend it on the Thursday and then come to Saturday, you're like, oh, I like this too. So I'll show you them all, it's the right thing to do, and then you can um, prioritise what, what is right for you, if you want anything, that is. So, um, oh, busy weekend. Hope he's going to hide the bank card. Hope he doesn't. So, yeah, but again, if you don't buy the products, check the inspiration, because some of the products that we've launched, we've done them before, but in a different design. So you will be able to maybe try the techniques that I do using some of the products that you bought from us before too. So that's all, that's all good stuff as well. So Pat Pepper, hi sweetheart, it's loving the hair. Mm. Yeah, fringe back. It'll be three weeks and it'll be pinned back because I do this and I do this. So you can imagine, can't you? But anyway, it's a change. A change is as good as the rest. I was just happy to actually get in the chair and get rid of the um, awful hair that was going on pre today's studio so hi susan adele bridget caroline and tracy patricia angela jane amanda it's lovely to see all um, the regulars on as well and it's lovely to see some new faces hi kathy kathy mills is on welcome welcome to the show sweetheart michaela shirley ramsey oh my good old friends nola paula aaron's here wow there's a lot of you on today 
You've just come to check out my ginger hair, haven't you? You haven't come to watch the show. <laughs> so we are going to be doing this lovely stamp today, which is the uh, watercolour magic. So it's the one with the large, it's the one with the large um, like silhouette roses and things like that. So we used it yesterday, uh, and I showed you. If you just look over my shoulder here, these these ones here, where you can just see them there. So that was just using a little bit of colour, but today we're going to be a little bit more creative. I'm going to try, try and encourage you to maybe pick up a fine liner pen or maybe paint these flowers yourself. What's that all about, you're thinking? So you know every time in studio we always, always, always make cards, always. And we never really get the chance to be arty or anything like that. So today, because this stamp really is um, this, sort of, this type of stamp that's going to encourage you to do more, than um, what another stamp will do, we're going to do it today. So it'd be interesting to see how many people do it with me or do it later or don't do it at all or post a message on Facebook saying I did it four times and it went in the bin. So there we go. So in short, I'm going to be using this stamp. I have my watercolour palette, but you can use your um, distress inks or any watercolours you've got from any other brand. Um, don't buy the stuff that I use if you have something at home that works already I'm here to encourage you to pick up the brush and to try new things but if you have something at home that's already going to work for you or does work for you then you know stick with it don't try and be like anybody else so I'm just getting my things out here so I've got my fine liner which is just an inexpensive fine liner I've got a um, size size 4 paintbrush and my watercolour pans and then I've just got some water here too so first of all let's show you how to just create a realistic looking flower that looks like you've painted it but using the stamp first okay so if you don't want to try and do it yourself or play um, then that's fine let's do it this way first so I'm just going to take one of the stamps from the set now I have no idea where my magnet's gone it's attached to something. It just, is it stuck to my scissors? That's normally its place. No, it could be anywhere. So let's just stamp this one out. So first of all, I want this to look realistic in the sense that I've painted it. So what we need to do is we just need to stamp it out in a really light color. Okay, so let's grab a light colored ink pad. So let's see what I've got going on in here. So I've got tea dye, that's normally a good one, or antique linen. These are normally great light stamps. ink sorry to do your stamping okay just one second thank you did you see that thank you Nathan you just typed a message saying Tony I think you have a spare magnet under the handle of your cut and boss oh it's underneath there it is <laughs> What are we like? Sorry. That's my fault. Blame it on the hair. So let's just make sure that's in a rough place. It doesn't really matter because it's just for a... I'm, just, I'm not going to make anything with this. I'm just going to show you how we do something simple. Is everybody okay? Everybody's okay. So antique linen I'm just going to use. So first of all, let's stamp it out in a light colour. So you may have seen me do this with our lovely lamination stamps where we do it in the light colour and paint it in. The enjoyment is actually painting it in. So do have the courage to try this sort of technique. It really does look like you've um, watercoloured it. It really does. So I'm not going for a precise image. I just want something loose to help me. There we go. So we've got a lovely loose image there. Just want something as a suggestion so I can freehand paint this in. So let's bring in our palette here. Who's crafting along? <laughs> right, so let's do the leaves first. So there are a few ways you can make this look realistic. You can cover one petal at a time with water and drop some green in. 
and just watch what happens. So what I would suggest you do is if you're trying this at home for the first time, you don't pick up a brush normally, you don't have your watercolours out normally. Stamp a few of these on one page and do different things in each one. And then at the end of it, when it's dry, you'll be able to pick which one was your favourite and then you can build on the one that you enjoyed and then grow from there. That's, that's, that's how I generally learn or grow. So basically, I'm just covering this little leaf here with water. And this is called just basic wetting wet technique, okay? Nothing fancy. So you just put clean, clear water on the petal and then you just drop some colour in there. So you drop the colour in and what happens is the water just carries that colour all over that lovely leaf. Don't be scared to make it bigger, smaller. Drop that colour in and then leave it to dry, okay? So let's do these three here all the same way. So clean, clear water all over. Clean the brush and then just pick up some of this lovely green. And just drop that green into that water. Pounce it in like I've shown you with the side of your brush and just leave it be. Okay, so clean, clear water. pick up some green and drop it in. So there are a few pros with um, doing the wet in wet technique. So now because it's still wet, you can take a darker green, mix up some darker green and just drop some darker green in at the one area. Let's just get some more on there and drop it in, pounce it in. Now you could do it, let's do it all down one side and you get texture. Can you see how you've got texture there? And by the end of you doing this throughout the whole of this stamp, the recipient or whoever you show will never know, never, never know that you have absolutely used a stamp. It looks like it's freehand. So I'll just drop some green in, some dark shade of green and just let the water just carry it away. So let's do these three ones here just as slightly differently. So this time we're going to paint direct. We're not going to do wet in wet, we're just going to paint the colour direct. So I've just got some green on my brush here and I'm just going to go in and paint direct. So you can already see there is a difference. So it's personal preference. So this looks watercoloured and sort of um, textured and this looks clean and crisp. So it depends what sort of look you're going for. Okay, so let's do this one up here the same. Can we see that there? So let's move on to the colour part. So let's do the wet in wet on some of it and then not on the other. So this part here is a, is a lovely colourful petal. So let's add some water. And what we'll do is we'll go, we could go pink and purple, but today we're going to go yellow and orange. So I'm just dropping some of that lovely yellow into that water. Pounce it in with your brush. And then swap out for another colour. And then whilst it's still wet, just pound some of that orange. Wherever you think, there are no rules, you can pop it wherever you want. And just let the water carry, you can see the water moving it around now. So I'm just going to wet this one. So as long as you follow the stamp, you'll end up with a beautiful painted rose by the time you're finished. So if you're looking for colour, colour combos, like if you might have a rose in your garden, if you're not the avid gardener, um, have a look on the internet at different colours of roses and things like that. So again, I'm just popping the water into this part here. Clean, clear water. Let's get some yellow down there. Pick up 
out in that lovely orange. And can you see I'm not doing anything to that and it's just, the water's just carrying it out. If you pop your colour down and nothing happens, it means your card's not wet enough. Just add a little bit more water and the water will just work, do the work for you. You don't really have to overthink what's going on. So let's paint this one this side in. So no, um, no water down first, we're just painting this side in. I think that was actually a, a leaf, that one there, but hey ho, it's now a petal. <laughs> Yeah, so this is watercolour card. It just allows me to move the colour around a little bit easier. But it will work on cardstock too. You just won't be able to move it around quite as much. So, um, and don't oversaturate either because you'll just get an awful pill on your cardstock, which is not very pleasant. So that is the rose just painted. Easy peasy or what? So let's just dry this off. So very, very, very easy just to do that one. Roseanne's done more watercolour in the last six weeks than ever before. It is sometimes nice just to have your paper and your watercolour palette and your brush and just play, it really is. So you could absolutely jazz this up with your splat. But let me just show you how different it looks as soon as... You pop a sentiment straight through the middle of it. So now you can stick us, can we see that there? It's a little bit big is this one, so I'm just going to move it over. And when I say stamp your sentiment straight through your artwork, you can do it straight in the centre if it was a bigger image, but try and connect your sentiments in some way to your artwork. So let's just stamp that on here, look. You just, it just gives it that little bit of an arty feel if the words go through your artwork a little bit. So just grab a black ink pad. You see how pretty that is? So then what happens is, I'm not going to add it with splashes because this is not actually the project we're doing, but I just wanted to show you that you can make a realistic, it looks like you've picked up a brush and watercolored a card just with the stamp, okay? You do not have to paint freehand, okay? But look what happens as soon as you pop a frame or something around. Obviously it'd be bigger, or you could actually pop it up in the corner. But as soon as you pop a pretty frame around, you've got a gift, haven't you, for a, for a loved one. You could maybe do two. I haven't used actually the biggest one on the set there, but you could do two, couldn't you? So think about, if that's just taken me literally a, a minute, two, something like that, you could really, really, um, and if, particularly if you're making and selling, you could absolutely get those inexpensive frames from the inexpensive shops that we all go to and do several and maybe sell them for five pounds or something if you're trying to recoup a bit of money back to you know buy more things and um, so absolutely and these frames are, i think they're a pound without the frame so just a little bit of food for thought there with your artwork do them all in different color waves and things like that so this time let's just grab So I have another piece of watercolour card here, look. And what we're going to do this time is going back to the piece of art that you've just painted, I'm going to try and paint this rose now without the stamp. 
And I'm going to show you a really easy way. Everybody's like, oh, my anxiety. I can see all you're looking at your watches. Your anxiety's just gone through the roof, hasn't it? <laughs> what, are we, what are we like, okay? Painting? I'm not an artist. Well, neither am I, but, you know, I'm going to give it a go. So... For those of you, and I have had, the reason, not one of the reasons why I'm doing this today, but I have had, I've spoke to a few people via email or people that have rang the studio or things like that. And they have said to me that they have been to painting classes and thoroughly enjoyed it. But for some reason, what, what, for whatever reason, it's ended up coming to an end. So um, it's on the list. I've got a list just over there on my right hand side of things that we need to go through. I've got gouache, acrylic, I've got lamination on there. So as soon as we've finished with our academy, we're going to start revisiting all of these things that you've all been asking for. But one thing I did want to do, if you wanted me to, OMG, oh heck, Joan, are you scared? <laughs> um, is we were going to maybe allocate one day to painting, just freehand painting and playing. And I don't mean like extravagant landscapes and things like that, but maybe just painting a poppy or maybe painting a rose. And just doing it week on week on week and just, you, you, you won't know it yourselves, but picking this up week on week on week, you will improve. It's, it's what naturally happens if you continue to repeat something. It's like it takes three week, weeks to pick up a bad habit, three weeks to get rid of a bad habit, but three weeks of painting with a brush and you will already see that you've got progress. So let me know if that is something you would want me to do. So just one, just one day though, and allocate it to maybe painting just some loose. You've seen the YouTube videos that I do, just painting loose poppies and flowers and things like that. So if it's something you want me to do and talk through at the same time so you can have a piece of card at home and you can paint at the same time, then we'll do that. Oh, I'm getting a lot of yeses. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and paint a freehand rose. So with studio, it's really different today, isn't it, hey? It must be the new hair. I doubt it. So these, the way that I paint a rose is I do lots of C's, so the letter C's. So I get some colour on my brush. Now I'm going to go bright so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to load my brush with some colour here. And what I'll try and, I'll not do it too big because it'll probably look like a great big poppy by the end of it because all my work seems to turn into a poppy. <laughs> but um, let's have a look. Seascape, yeah, I've painted a few things. They're all on YouTube. Uh, I have improved since then, though, hopefully. So anyway, so when I do a rose, I always do a, like a couple of C's. So I do like a, just a, a, like the letter C. And I just do it in lots of very, very loose areas. So like so. So what I do is I do lots of C's first. So and I just get the C's to go bigger. So just change where you pop, where you pop them, but you're just in a sense painting C's. So you can make them thin at the top of the C, down to a thicker stem, down to a small one. And then the wider you go, obviously it stops looking more like a C. And it sort of like just looks like a curve. So, can we see that there? So that's how I do it. And then what I do is I clean my brush and I just get some clean, clear water on my brush and I just pop the water, clean water, into the plain areas and I just draw a further C. Can you see how that's dragged out? So where it's white, I just do another C in that area. Can we see that there? And then you just let the water do its magic. Nothing, nothing difficult. So just follow the same route you've just been. This is drying quite fast in the, in the lights, but it's okay. So I just add that water in the same circle and bring it all together. And the water will just carry Just tidy it up a little bit for you. And the water will just carry that colour. And 
as I always say, see your card out right to the very end. Like now, you're probably thinking, that seriously, seriously, are you going to not put that in the bin? No, I'm not absolutely not going to put that in the bin because when I put my leaves on, it's going to look rather pretty. So whilst it's wet like that, you can then get some orange, pop a little bit of orange in. And it doesn't matter where you pop your orange, just go for it, the, the colour is wet. Like so. So let's just leave that. So we all so far, what happened to the... Kathy, what happened to... Oh, Kathy, what happened to the Glitter Girls? They retired. They did... They did... I don't know. Kathy, how many years did you do on Create... How many years did you have your business, Kathy? She's actually online, so hopefully we'll get an answer. I remember watching Create and Craft for the first time with Kathy. So, yeah, they have to retire at some point. Ten years, <laughs> loved every minute, Tony. I know. She's still, she's still an avid crafter now. Despite all the ups and downs, she's still hard at it, bless her. Very talented. Right, so let's move on to the green. So get some green on your brush. Just load the colour on your brush. And let's just, I'm just going to, let me just show you how we do the leaves because it's a little bit different to how we did our curlicas, should, as my son would say. So here I'm just grabbing. So the way that I do my leaves is you, put, you pop your brush, tip first down, then put, apply the pressure so you get the fat part and then bring your brush up. Can we see that there? Just do it again. So tip of your brush, pull it down, press on fat with your brush. I've got no colour on my brush and up. Let's just get some more colour. And dependent on what type of brush you've got or things like this. So they're the types of leaves. If you're wanting to do a fat one, then you do another one at the side and make it into a chunky one. Is that okay? Is everybody with me so far? So tip of your brush, put the pressure on, pull the brush up. And if you want to do a fat one, tip of your brush, pull the brush up and take it off. Can we see that there? Now, I am not claiming in any way to be an artist. I just find the easiest ways to get maximum results. And this is the way that, you know, this is the way that I learn and paint. And it's just from watching other fabulous painters do incredible things. So. Let's pick up some of the lighter green and some of the darker green. So let's do that technique, what we just did on there. So I'm just going to pop my brush point down, fat, take it off. And I'm going to make it this one into a fat petal. So off. So we've got two going on. So let's twist our work around a little bit. So you can connect them if you want to, but light into fat, into thin. Can we see that there? So, so tip of your brush, I should have the fatter brush really for the thinner ones, but it doesn't matter. Can you see now how this is already starting to look better because it's drying? So at the f at the f when you first pop the colour down, I mean under the lights in here it dries much, much quicker than you just actually physically sat and playing. So. Um, you won't have to be as quick as I have to be, but when you first do it, you're thinking, that's not quite right, uh, you know, oh, where's she, where's she going with this? Um, but you've got to have the courage to, you know, stick it out to the very end. Let's just connect those. Can we see that there? So very, very simple. Now, you could do another rose here if you wanted to, but I'm not going to bore you because I'm going to move on to an actual card now, back to the stamp. So... Let's set that aside because I don't want to. Let's just dry this one off. In fact, before we do that, let's just add some splats to show you that you can make your artwork look like artwork. So let's just get some of that lovely. As soon as you add some splashes, it looks different again. 
you know, maybe have a, add a wash around. Let's pick up some of the orange we've got going on there. You trim it down and as soon as you mount it onto that black like we've spoke about before, it instantly looks like artwork. So please, oh no, not splats. Me and splats do not get on. <laughs> so please have the courage to, you know, try it and see it through to the end. Because look what, when as soon as I've dried this off, I am going to add that sentiment and pop the frame around and just show you how again, from you just picking up the brush and not using the stamp. So let's just grab that one again, be you. So I'm just gonna connect it into that bottom leaf so it's not floating around. Just move this one out of the way. And then let's just bring these two back into play here. And let's just show you a look. So this is the one with the stamp and this is the one we just quickly freehand. Let's just move them over so you can see what's going on there. And look what happens. So you saw this one with the frame around. Very pretty. You could pop some sparkles around there if you want to. But then what happens if you pop it around your own work? It looks equally as beautiful. So please give it a go at home. Don't be scared of it. It doesn't bite. And again, it's a piece of card. It can go in the bin if it doesn't work. That's how we work. So let's get onto an actual, actual card. Let me just tidy my station here. So I have actually just done them leaves on my, on my card. Can you believe that? But I'm gonna have to turn it over. It's gonna be texturized, this card. <laughs> So let's go with what we've got going on on our stamp. So as of yes, same of yesterday. So first of all, I'm going to pop all pieces from the stamp when I find the stamp. Here we go. All pieces from the stamp onto here. And we're going to create something similar to yesterday, but something a little different. So yesterday we just used the um, solid portion in watercolours. And so today we're going to add an outline. So again, it doesn't look like a stamp. Just move that up there. Just need one for that. We'll add that one in a bit. So if you did miss yesterday's show, they still stay on YouTube. I did have a message from a lady saying that she's going to miss the show on Saturday the 25th, the Academy one. Um, and she was worried because she couldn't record it. Um, and I know a lot of people are not tech savvy and that's absolutely fine. But YouTube never gets rid of the videos. So it doesn't matter what I do on YouTube. It will always be there. You just need to physically go and find it. So... Um, They'll always be there. So let's do, yesterday we did a coral and a yellow, so today we'll go pink and purple and green. So pretty much same concept as yesterday, but today we're going to make it look like a two-part stamp. Oh no. <laughs> so first of all, let's ink up all of the roses. And the buds so I'm not being careful because as you all know I do like the loose look if you don't like the loose look and want it to be absolutely precise you're gonna have to go round and remove the color from the areas you don't want it to go around and that's fine a little bit more time-consuming but I love the loose look of of these sort of kind of stamps so let's give this a spritz and then pop it onto our card. 
and this is the textured side which will be interesting because it's not one I often use but you're going to see the different results now because I've had to turn it over because I've used it as a that is incredible just got a piece of fluff on there so if you do it at this point and you're thinking oh I don't like the texture I want it to be smoother just get your brush just drag the colour out just soften it a little bit and again did you know you just picked up that brush to soften those lines you'll after time you'll just naturally pick up that brush you'll be like actually I'm I watercolour more than I actually know about it there we go so let's add some purple to the roses now I'm not going to spray again but I'm just going to drop a bit of purple in and hopefully it will just accent some of those areas there we go just add a bit of water here just to soften that there let's just get a bit more purple on there if we can just to make it pop And at this stage there is no harm at all in you taking more colour and building on top of it to make it look even more watercoloured. So let's take one of the designs and just fill in this space at the bottom here. Oh sorry, the, sorry I'm too busy having fun, I'm not looking at the questions. I'm getting told off here guys. Um, peeled paint is the green peeled paint. So let's just take these off the carrier sheet. We'll just do this last one. So pink all over, green, spray with a little bit of water. down open up let's get some purple on there and just soften it a little bit looks like pretty paper doesn't it looks like a sheet of paper out of a nice pretty book so let's just I've got a piece of fluff there let me just get rid of that Right, so let's dry this off before we move on to the next stage. Right, so let's make this into a pretty card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a nice outline to this. I'm going to use my cutting plate and I'm going to use a fine liner. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the detail to some of the roses with my black fine line. I'm going to have the courage to do it. So I'm just going to pop a frame round first. I'm just going to try and get it on my mat and get it straight as I possibly can. So let's line it up on my mat. because they're always wonky and my mat and layers are always wonky as well I don't know what it is with studio but I just can never get anything straight in studio so I'll just line that plate up there and then I'm just going to pop make it a bit thinner and then I'm just going to pop my fine liner pen and I'm just going to draw a frame so I'm quite into the frames at the moment if you're trying to create a nice flat card but still want to add some dimension to your card these are a great it's a great way to do it so I've gone straight through the image as you will see you don't have to go through your image you can stop and start 
on the image if you wish. Make sure this is absolutely straight. It doesn't look very straight to me, but it's definitely drunk. I'm going to I'm going to complete it though. I am going to complete it because this is not the end of the technique. Make sure yours is straight, guys at home. <laughs> totally wonky. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add the detail ourselves. What pen am I using? Let's have a look. A Jura Mark from Staples. They're all pretty inexpensive. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to enhance the stamp. So we don't have the outline for this stamp, but I'm going to make it look like it had an outline. So how I draw outlines is I never complete the outline. If you've noticed from some of my own personal work, the outlines are never finished and mine are always a suggestion. So let's just show you this leaf here, what I'm going to do here. This one here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the line, but I'm not going to be precise and I'm just going to do this. See that there? And then I'm going to go around here, but I'm not going to finish it. Can we see that there? And then all I'm going to do from the centre out is flick. Can you see there? And this is how you'll get your lamination stamps at home, guys. So um, just do, can you see that there? Now you can finish, you can take it right to the end. You can just do one side. So you don't have to do it all. You see how the stamp is coming together? So just follow the line. And again, what I would say is, but obviously this is not good enough for a card, the frame is wonky. But do one rose, practice with your pen, or stamp several roses, practice with your pen. And then um, just go from there. If you don't like it, put it in bin, do another. Can you see that there? So let's have a look at these ones here. So very quickly. So if you have any solid stamps in your set already yourselves, you could just get them out and do your own outline. So because that frame is wonky, do you think we might be able to get away with doing a freehand to straighten it? Let's go, let's go with it, hey? Do you think I've straightened it slightly? <laughs> oh my gosh, let's add some stitch. This is to show you, um, this obviously was not intentional, I did really want a straight frame, um, but this is to show you that once you get to that part where you're thinking it's ready for the bin, you do things that you wouldn't normally do, <laughs> so you go a bit crazy. Do wiggles across the line, thanks Roseanne. <laughs> so you could just continue on and on and on. So I'm not going to continue on any further, but let's just show you what it would look like if we just popped a sentiment in and we did pop it on the black card. Let's just have a look, because I am going to see it through to the end despite my wonky frame, which now looks like a bit of an arty frame, should we say. Let's see what stamps I've got under here from Craft Academy. So which bit don't we like? <laughs> right, let's pop thank you. Just here, look. Shall we go shall we go with this? See where it takes us. You never know, we might like it at the end. So let's just pop thank you straight through here. Should we just move it over a little bit maybe? Oh. No, we'll do it on the side. Try and get it straight, hey? Christy, 
doing Bethany when the wanting list or a quick list of what I have got in my tin. Let's have a look. If I put my tin in screen, you will be able to pause. Is this a good idea? I think so. If I just put my lid in here, you'll be able to watch the video back and pause it and write them down. Is that okay? I'll hold it here for a couple of seconds so you can pause and hopefully you'll be able to write them down, all the ones that are in my tin. Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. If you have any problems, let me know. <laughs> there we go. So let's stamp this thank you straight through. And because we're on the textured side, it's obviously going to take a couple of stamps, which is fine because we've got our Eureka. And it is a spray painty type style font anyway, so let's just give it one more go. And if you get a stamp where you've got a bit of a spray paint effect and you're not quite happy with it, just take your fine liner and fill in those holes. Join it if you want to, if you don't like the style of it, you're not governed by how the style, how the stamp has been made, fill in those white places with your fine liner. There we go. So let's just mount it onto the black and let's see what everybody thinks despite the wonky frame. I think we've sort of recovered it a little bit. I'm not going to say it's amazing, but we recovered it a little bit, didn't we? need to do is stick this wonky. There we go. So some there. What do we think guys? Tried to rescue the wonky frame. It's not a bad effort. Could have been better but it's food for thought with regards to the fine liner pen. And if you are popping a frame around maybe measure and make it sure it's absolutely right so it's dependent on loose or with the detail have the courage to try both just do it on some scrap watercolor card you've got um, and then you know if you enjoy it you can build on it can't you if you don't and you just want to use the stamps then that's absolutely fine also so that's that one and then we just did our two little sort of playing ones here where we were just experimenting with the stamp without the stamp and then with the frame And without the frame so think about loved ones and frames and things like that so something a little bit different today um, I didn't want to really show you uh, sorry I did really really want to show you the artistic side of some of the stamps that you will have in your stanch you will be able to do this with your lamination ones particularly the ones that are a little bit more precise in um, in their design so the ones that look like flowers you can enhance them more with your fine liner pen things like that so you know give it a try um, I do try and do so many different things in studio and sometimes it is really difficult to come up with different ideas but again I get my inspiration from you guys you guys get it from me and it's just that turning circle where we all just have fun and I have fun all the time so there we go I will see you all tomorrow at one o'clock on the Eureka fan page I'm going to do it on and then if you can share it that would be absolutely brilliant um, and then I I get all my stuff ready and I've got some finished samples not many but I have got a few to show you so I can't wait to see you all tomorrow and then at three o'clock in studio using this stamp for the last time and I will give a rundown of all the brand new products in the shows at the weekend so super super exciting and I will see you all tomorrow have a great one whatever you're doing take care guys see you later bye